Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Kelly Chan, and I am the Community Relations and Public Service Manager here at CEB. CEB is a self-sustaining nonprofit program of the University of California. Before I start, um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to chat them in. We'll monitor the questions throughout the presentation. We'll also leave time at the end for, for Q&A as well. In today's webinar, we're going to focus on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network with hundreds of millions of members. In today's working and digital world, your professional online brand is key. And we are so lucky to have Annabella Bonfall with us today to share her knowledge on social media, networking, and using LinkedIn. Annabella is a business litigation attorney at Wellman and Warren and is an adjunct professor at Chapman University School of Law. So welcome, Annabella. Um, to begin, can you describe for us how LinkedIn compares to Facebook for lawyers? Like why LinkedIn? Hello there, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining. There is a difference between Facebook and LinkedIn. I, I know that lawyers are on both networks but I think that LinkedIn tends to reach a more professional audience for the most part and is probably, in my opinion, a slightly better way to market the practice because many professionals are on there looking for professional content and looking for other professionals rather than browsing just to you know, connect with friends. But I think you should actually be on both. You should be on Facebook too. The reason why I think lawyers should be on LinkedIn and have a good profile is for many reasons. The first one being that uh, in this digital age, we have many clients that are actually looking for background on attorneys when shopping for an attorney. So all things being equal and given 10 attorneys to choose from that are recommended from different people, first thing they're going to do is, you know, put your name into a Google or a search and try to see what information they can find on you. And in this age, when people are even buying hamburgers, looking at Yelp, they're certainly going to spend some time looking on social media for their lawyers. On social media, it's important that you have a unique brand, and we're going to get into that before we get into the logistics. I think you need to understand that, you know, your brand is personal to you. It's going to be different from anybody else's. And what sells you may not sell another lawyer and vice versa. So let's talk about the first thing you need in your LinkedIn profile. You need a good picture. And when I say a good picture, you should look lawyerly or like you're from the legal profession, preferably in a suit. And it should be close enough, like on the left, where you can actually see the face and a little bit of the chest. Because every time you post something on LinkedIn, you're actually going to see your picture. It's going to pop up. So it's kind of like an ad, you know. So you want to be recognizable and hopefully have a current picture. I've seen sometimes people have pictures from 20 years ago. They, they may look different. You want to have something that if you go into a room, they can immediately recognize your face. And obviously the one on the right is very silly, but you know, it's too far away, it's distracting, there's other things in the background, and you really can't see my face at all. And by the time it's shrunken down to the size that'll appear on LinkedIn, it's just too small. The most important thing is to actually have a picture. A lot of people do not have pictures in their profiles, and this is a problem. Um, I've seen many different reasons why people don't have a picture. One of them is that I don't know how to upload my picture. That doesn't go over well with clients because here you are, a legal professional asking them to give you a $20,000 retainer and, and they don't understand why you, you, you are handling a complex legal matter. You can't figure out how to upload a picture. The other reason why people don't have a picture sometimes is they say that, you know, I don't like the way I look or I'm not comfortable with myself. Then you're seen as somebody that does not have good self-esteem. So if you can't figure out how to load it yourself, have somebody else load your picture. Install the LinkedIn app on your phone because that way you, when you're on the go, you're at the supermarket, you're watching TV, you can quickly add anything to LinkedIn, comment on LinkedIn posts and do what you need to do with the touch of a button. Let's talk about the actual LinkedIn profile now. Part of your brand is to capture the attention immediately as soon as people log on to your LinkedIn page. And one of the ways you do that is with a headline. Uh, many lawyers in the headline, and when I say the headline, I mean right under your name. So right under where it says Annabella Bonta, you can see it says trade secret attorney, Rotary Community Service Leader Speaker. 
I want people to know immediately that A, I am a specialty attorney in trade secrets, B, that I am very involved in community service and that I'm a speaker. I want to capture the attention. I'm going to show you the different hats that I wear right away because I want you to know that I'm more than one dimensional as an attorney. And that is important in this digital age. The more interest you can generate for whatever reasons is going to bring more attention to you as a person. This is the heart of the LinkedIn profile, the actual background summary. And this is where a lot of attorneys don't do so good a job because they don't answer the two main questions that a person needs to answer, which is who are my clients and what am I doing for them? Many profiles have too complex descriptions of what they do. So, you know, they use legal jargon. I mean, if I had a profile and as a trade secrets attorney and, and I put on here that oh, I can get you a preliminary injunction and deal with your TROs and do ex parties for you, well, that's fine, except that most of the people that are reading this don't know what a TRO is or an injunction. So avoid complex terms of art that are specific to your area of practice and bring it down to a level where anybody can understand exactly what you do, such as, you know, if a high school student can't understand it, I would say it's too complex. Because the point of this profile is not just to sell yourself to direct users, but it's also to make everybody understand what you do, because if they don't need you, that's okay, but they might know 20 other people that might have a legal need and might have a need for your services. And if you can't make people understand what you do, they can't help you market yourself to other people. So generally, the background summary, this is the part that does not look like a resume. It's the first thing you see when you open the profile. It should explain, you know, what you do. So in my case, I'm in trade secrets. Uh, a lot of attorneys don't even know what that is. So I have to bring it to a very easy level and explain that I deal with cases where people are stealing customer data from their employers, such as supply lists and pricing information. So I give an explanation that anybody can understand, even non-lawyers. And then I'm going to provide a little bit of background about, you know, other areas of my life, such as the fact that, you know, I teach it. I've taught at Brandman, I've taught at Chapman, and, you know, that I'm very involved in Rotary. Why? Because, again, it's a brand. My brand, and you'll see it throughout the profile, is lawyer, community service leader. Why should I care or why should anybody care if I'm a community service leader? Why? Because people are interested in doing business with me as a lawyer because they might be community service leaders or they enjoy doing community service. And opening the door and showing this aspect of my life, such as Rotary and my hands-on work, helps me connect with other people that are similar, similarly minded. Now, I know when I have my brand out there that that brand is not going to appeal to everybody. Some people are going to say, well, you know what? I don't want a lawyer that does community service. I want a shark that's going to like stick it to somebody and I don't really care that they're touchy feely or nice or anything else. Yeah, that, that, there may be some people like that out there, but for others, my brand and my community service work being an attorney at the same time is really going to appeal to them. And it does appeal to many people. So after you have the simple description here of who your clients are and what you do, then I think it's very handy at the bottom of this summary to actually have your areas of practice and a little laundry list down there that explains what your different areas are. So if they don't feel like reading these three or four paragraphs, they can just kind of glance down, look at the areas of practice and see if this is something that uh, they're interested in or they have friends that are interested. Yesterday, I received a call from a gentleman whose um, son has a legal issue going on. He said, oh, my son has an issue that is exactly like your second paragraph of your LinkedIn profile. So I know people read this. Pictures, let's talk about pictures. Pictures are everything in a digital media these days, especially when you're marketing somebody. And we're in an age now where people, you know, they're not reading the newspaper anymore. They're actually getting their news by digital media, going through Flipboard or something on their phone. And if they see that the picture is interesting and the headline is interesting, they'll read further. And if they don't see any pictures or if it's not interesting to them, they won't read further. In my case, I'm a very hands-on lawyer. I have very close relationships with my clients. You know, I'm a community service person. So I'm going to show you some pictures, a glance of my life, if you will, that show you my closeness with my, my clients and, and my rotary work and so forth. So you can get a little bit of an idea of who I am. Again, this is part of my brand. 
it may not be consistent with your brand. You know, maybe your brand is collections and you want to be known as somebody that's very aggressive and that's the only aspect of your life you want to share. You know, maybe you want to show victories. Maybe you want to show you standing in front of a courtroom. Maybe you want to show yourself with a big judgment in your hand. You just have to think about what you're selling. Realize that your brand and your pictures should all be connected to one another. Then we get into the part of the actual profile that shows the resume, so to speak. And if you did a good job up at the top with a summary, then you shouldn't need to say much here except a brief description of what you do for the various jobs you've had in your current job. Again, LinkedIn offers you an ability to actually post pictures here. And I, again, I have pictures with clients. I have pictures at the law school. I have pictures of the mayor. You know, uh, the different areas of my life that I want to show and highlight that are part of my brand. LinkedIn has an area that's called volunteer experience and causes. And if you are a person that's involved in any kind of volunteer work, then I would suggest you put it on here. Many people are part of bar organizations that do community service work, or they're part of Second Harvest, or they might be part of working wardrobes. Whatever kind of work you do that's outside the arena, is very hot right now because people are interested in actually working for companies that do community service. And this is a big area right now. So if you have a background like myself, I work with Rotary, we're a hands-on community service organization, we're international, we do international work, we do local work, then you would want to highlight the kind of work you do and show it off in this section. Because again, similarly minded people are going to be very interested in this, even though it has nothing to do with your work as a lawyer. Client recommendations, again, extremely important in, in digital marketing. Uh, as I mentioned before, you know, now I don't know about you, but when I'm looking for a good taco, I go on Yelp and I find the best places with the best reviews about the perfect taco I plan on eating for lunch. So they're certainly going to do that would be clients when it comes to LinkedIn about their lawyer. So I reach out to clients and since I handle litigation matters, my relationship with the client could go on for some period of months. And if I'm connecting with a client well, which I do with most of my clients and I'm feeling a connection with them and they're telling me, gee, I'm so glad you're my lawyer. I start planting the seed early on and I say, oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad I'm helpful to you. You know, maybe when this litigation is over, you'd be comfortable, you know, writing a recommendation for me since everybody is shopping for their lawyer online these days. They usually say, fine, sure, we'd love to. And then when the case is over and everything is done, I send them a link through LinkedIn to make it easy for them after calling them, of course, and asking them, you know, would you be comfortable writing a review for me? And keep in mind that these are personal issues. People don't like airing their laundry about their legal issues. So I give them an out. I tell them, you know, you don't have to give details about the case. If you'd be comfortable saying something like, you know, how was my service? Did I return my calls? Did I make you feel comfortable? Did I keep you in the loop? Did I tell you what was going on? Did, were you comfortable with the strategies? Then I think you'll have a much easier time getting clients to actually recommend you. If they feel like they have to get into nuances about their legal issues, they don't want to talk about these issues, at least not online on some public platform. Uh, some clients will do it, some clients won't do it, but they won't do it if you don't ask for the most part. So you got to get yourself in the mode where you're not afraid to ask and just be honest. Say, you know, everybody these days is shopping for attorneys online, looking at reviews, and it would really help me to market myself to future clients if you would be comfortable writing me a review and see what they say. There's a publication section in LinkedIn, and the publication section is not just for, you know, legal books you've written. Many of us write blogs or give lectures. I know I give lectures all the time about uh, trade secrets, uh, law practice, social media, and every time I give a presentation, even the one today, I will add to my LinkedIn profile and list it on here because it gives me credibility. It shows my expertise in various areas. And it shows that you're a person that's out there in the community, um, you know, connecting with people. So I think it helps you all the way around. And you can even uh, connect this. They have a way to do it to where you can connect to blogs that are online currently on the law firm website. So uh, you can actually create the link in your publications where it can go to a blog article you write monthly or pretty much anywhere you care to send it to. 
I add the LinkedIn email button to my emails. And if you want to figure out how to do it, I mean, literally put in how to create a LinkedIn email button or button and into Google and it'll walk you through the steps. And I put it on there because I want as many people as possible to see my LinkedIn profile. And I've had other attorneys ask me, oh, well, why would you want to, you know, the opponent to see it? Uh, I want the opponent to see it. I, frankly, I want everybody to see it because I have a lot of good reviews from clients. In a position where I'm trying to sell myself and market myself, it's difficult to do it yourself. You know, it's difficult to talk about yourself. I mean, really what I want to be known as is somebody that's uh, compassionate and provides excellent care for my clients. I'm a good shoulder to cry on. But at the same time, I'm an aggressive lawyer and I want other people to know that. And the best way to get that message across is actually through my clients, not myself. I mean, for me to say, oh, I can go in there and well, I've been aggressive and I'm tough as a you know, female litigator is one thing. But to have a client get in and say the same message that, you know, that they saw your cross-examinations, that you were aggressive and that you got them the results they wanted is a different matter. Women litigators in particular, there is usually a question from some clients about, gee, are you going to be tough enough? Are you going to be strong enough? If you are a compassionate type of person and if you are going to be a good handholder, which is part of my brand. So I definitely want everybody to see it. And because I have the LinkedIn button on my emails, more people are apt to let go on my profile than otherwise, which is the name of the game. I want as many people to know who I am as possible. I'm showing a, a profile from my son who's all of 16 years old because I have, I know some law students and younger professionals. And the reason why I'm showing his profile is I think that even a very young person with very limited experience can use these same principles of showing the different hats they wear. This case, he's had like all of, you know, a few couple of years of uh, fast food experience, but you're gonna see, let's go to the next slide, that there's plenty to be said, even about somebody as young as him. He could talk about, the details of the service that he's done for Rotary. He can talk about uh, the details of the food service he's done. In that first paragraph, it goes into quite a bit of detail about what kind of food service experience he has. So for those of you who are new to the law and maybe you know, you've only had uh, one year of clerking experience or maybe no clerking experience, you can actually take whatever kind of experience you've had from any kind of job and package it up so that it sounds good and so that prospective employers that might be hiring a lawyer or a law clerk are actually interested in you because you look like you're a mover and shaker. In his profile, you know, we've uh, talked about community service experience and we've talked about some projects he's done at school, but they look good and they sound good. And in the picture section, we're showing off the engineering interests he has because he wants to go into an engineering program uh, being, being a pianist and also showing some community service work and, you know, his athletic abilities. How is this relevant to you? Again, it's part of his brand. He's got a brand. We all have a brand. And this brand that we have that's personal to us is going to sell us to people. So let's go into posting content now, which is, I think, very important because most people, once they get a profile up, they tell me, gee, I, I've got a profile, but I don't know what to do with it. And I don't know what to post and I don't know where to get content. And I don't have time to be sitting around writing a blog every week. Um, there are, are firms that have wonderful blogs that are written for them by marketing professionals or the attorney actually sits down and writes a blog article every week. I think that's wonderful. I personally don't have time to do that. And I think that many of you probably don't have time to do that either because you're too busy practicing law and you've got deadlines and, and other priorities. So I'm going to show you some quick tips on how you can post things. And, and I want you to see on my profile just how many people are looking at them because I think you'll be surprised at how many people you can reach with these easy tips. So to post, you're going to go to the home page. The home page is the one with a little house that goes across the top. And where it's circled there, you can see that's the area where you start your post. You can write an article on LinkedIn. So you can essentially do kind of like a blog type of article on LinkedIn, which is posted. You can post images, which are photos you take. And you can also post video on there as well. I've done all three, but uh, let's go into detail about how actually to do it. 
So let's say uh, you are in a particular area of the law like I am with trade secrets and you want to share some news about trade secret law, but you don't really have time to write an article. Well, what I do is I do a search maybe weekly or monthly to see what is new in trade secrets law or, or like you, we get a lot of emails with uh, news that's going on in my area of the law. I find the website that talks about, uh, you know, this ended up being um, an article about Waymo and Uber and settlement and a trade secrets case, which was big news. And so I went over to find the, the article on the internet and I took the URL, you know, that's the www blah, blah, blah. It's at the top and I just copied that. And once I copied that, I went back to that little house, you know, back to the place where I showed you where you actually put in your content, and I copied the URL, the www, et cetera, into the body. What happens when I do that is it immediately shares the article on there, and then it's sharing all the information from the article. There's a link to the article, and then I can comment from there and say something like, oh, here's what's new in trade secret law you know, Uber is blah, 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 and I can write whatever I have to say. I mean, how long does that whole process take me? Probably 10 minutes, uh, maybe less, if I got the news in my inbox and I already have it handy. But I want people to keep me in mind and keep me top of mind for trade secret law. So this is how I share news about the industry very quickly with minimal time involved. And there's my finished post, you can see that I, I have oh, one sentence about what's going on with this case. It looks good, it looks professional, it has uh, relevant content to my area of the law, and again, it took me all of 10 minutes. So this is a great way to share legal content, and I would recommend it highly for those of you that don't have time to write your own legal blog. Here's another different type of post. Again, uh, in my area of the law, you know, it's not all about trade secrets. People are also interested in how I might share my legal knowledge with others. So I went to, to a high school and I had like a table there for a career type fair. And I was, uh, you know, talking about careers in law to high school students as part of, you know, community outreach for my firm. And I happened to be next to, I think it was the U.S. Marines and the Air Force. They were one on one, one side and the others were on the other side. And, so I'm always thinking about marketing. I have my camera out and I you know, grab the folks from the Marines and the Air Force and said, you know, I'd like to do a, a little post on LinkedIn about different careers. And, you know, you guys obviously are here trying to recruit people for different armed services. And I'm trying to cre create lawyers here. So why don't we grab a picture together? They were all for it. Took this picture. I posted it on LinkedIn. And you can see there's almost 1,922 people that like this picture because it's an interesting picture. You know, it has different careers. You know, uh, you know, you got me and my lawyer outfit, and you got the, the Marines and the Air Force. I mean, what's not to like about this picture? Very popular picture. When uh, Chapman University asked me to join to to teach a class on federal civil procedure, you know, when I went to the law school, I handed over my camera to a student that would take a picture of me in front of the law school and I posted this, which was also a very popular post. It's very lawyerly to teach a law school class. I mean, I love it. I enjoy sharing my knowledge of the law with students. There's some great students here that are just really bright, you know, upcoming lawyers. And I'm proud of my association with the school and I want to show off the school and market the school as well as show my affiliation with the school in this post, which is why I have it. And again, it was a very popular post and took me all of what, five minutes to write it. Here's another one. Um, many of us are involved in networking groups. I know I am very active in an organization called Provisors and my fellow group leaders in the same organization, we run groups of lawyers, CPAs, marketing professionals, all kinds of different industries, which meet once a month and do networking. So the group leaders get together once a month for a group meeting to share ideas and comment on uh, different events we have going on. And so, you know, while I was there, I know that every single person in this picture is a mover and shaker and a good community service and hands-on networking leader. So I got this picture of all these different people and I went ahead and I tagged it. We're gonna see how to do that in, in the future. But I put people's names on it essentially. 
And because all these different people had such great connections, you can see that there's 3,525 people that actually saw this post. So the fact that I'm associated with this great group of people, and they all have connections, again, is showing off that um, you know, we're all part of a networking group and it helps market all of us. I wanna market provisors, I wanna market myself, I wanna market my fellow group leaders. And there's no better way to do that than with one picture. Again, we were talking about um, the networking group, more pictures of the networking group. LinkedIn does allow you to do albums, so to speak. And I found it, it gives you maybe six or eight pictures that fit in and then the size gets too big. But if I'm having a fun networking group meeting, like I was here where everybody had to draw out their profession, and, you know, by the way, what I learned is lawyers can't draw for the most part. <laughs> Very amusing to see how people drew. Mine was bad, but there was others that were worse. But we all had a great time. And then I went ahead in that group picture that you see on the left, there's a better view of it on the right side. And then I started tagging people. So you just basically click on the picture and then those people that you are connected with, you, you get a drop down menu and you could find their names and then their names go on the picture. And when that happens, these people that are in the picture actually get a little, a little blip on their LinkedIn profile saying that, you know, there's a post about you and then they go into their LinkedIn profile because they want to see the post about them and then they read about it and then they comment on my LinkedIn post, which is what I want, just like Facebook, I want people looking at it and I want people to view it and, and then I comment back on whatever they said. Just like Facebook, there's algorithms that LinkedIn uses. So the bottom line is, is that the more people that see it and comment on it, the more people are gonna see it in the future. So you want to get your post rolling with as many people as possible. And again, all these people I know well and I'm trying to market them as well because they're in the same organization as well as myself. What you have to understand about marketing is it's not about you. I mean, yes, I guess it is about you, but really to get people looking and interested in you, you have to market other people. It's a two-way street. You have to, I'm always out marketing other people because I know that marketing other people will market myself as well. But as we all know, all of us that network, the more you market other people, the more business comes back to you. And you can see that there's more than 5,000 people that saw this post because, again, there was a lot of interest generated from different people and their pictures where they're trying to market themselves and just people that know other people. So that's my tip. Again, the brand, my brand is about community service leadership in addition to the practice of law. So I find that my community service efforts actually help market me as a lawyer, but they also help market the community service. So they're, they're actually a symbiotic relationship. One helps the other. So I reach people, people in the legal community that come out to do community service with me. And I take people from the community service area that are looking for lawyers and connect them with all kinds of different lawyers. People know me and they trust me because I've worked side by side with them doing, you know, community service work, building a house in Mexico, you know, collecting food for thousands of people. So they know me that way. And when they need somebody, they're very likely to reach out and say, hey, you know, Annabella, I need a lawyer for family law. I need a lawyer for you know, wills and trust. Do you know anybody that you trust? Because they trust me because of my community service work. So I market both things simultaneously. And, and frankly, I love it when I've had lawyers join me to go build houses and collect food and collect shoes and collect all kinds of things. So I create interest both in the community service and the law work simultaneously and one benefits the other. Videos can be on there. I mean, these ones happen to be community service videos where I'm doing a food drive or I'm building a house for Rotary. But they could also be videos of, you know, you with clients, you know, after a big win, or you could be uh, giving a legal workshop, or you could be, uh, you know, at a high school doing a career fair on law. Anything that's related to the law or whatever the brand is that you have going is perfect. And people like videos, as long as they're not too long. I wouldn't make them more than you know, two and a half minutes max, because that's about the only attention span people have these days. But videos get a lot of interest and are quick and easy to post just from your phone. 
Again, uh, the community service image, I invite other lawyers to come out and do community service with me. So if I have an event coming up or if you have a legal event, it's the same issue. You post it on LinkedIn and say, oh, coming. Maybe, maybe your post is going to be community service. Maybe your post is going to be for uh, some kind of a workshop that your law firm is doing. And either way, you actually invite people to a project by putting it on LinkedIn, telling them where to go. And then I was fortunate enough to have uh, another attorney come out and join me for the American Cancer Blanket Making Project, where we create blankets that we give to pan cancer patients undergoing chemotherapy. And this was a great time to market myself as a lawyer and to market my other friends that are lawyers that do community service work. We got some great pictures. We shared it online and a lot of people looked at it. Now, once you actually have a post that's out there and people are com commenting on it, the, the work does not end there. You actually need to keep the conversational ball rolling. So it's like a conversation, it needs to keep going. So if you wanna see how you're doing on that right side of the screen, you can see uh, an area that's called you see your picture on top right with a little circle, it says me, and then below that it says posts and activity. If you go into your posts and activity, and you're going to want to do this, because you want to see what, which of your posts are doing well and which are. So the more people you have liking a post, that gives you a message. Oh, this, this type of post is popular, and so I should do more of this, or maybe I shouldn't do this other kind of post because nobody, two people looked at it. And, Nobody said a word about it. So I always keep a pulse on what's doing well and what isn't. And when I see people on the left side that are commenting on my post, then, you know, just like Facebook, you press the little thumbs up sign to like what they had to say. And then I usually respond back. I say something about, you know, uh, thank you for, for commenting on my post and come out and, you know, join me next time. Whatever the case is, I keep commenting on people's comments because that keeps the numbers up higher in LinkedIn so that people will see my post. Now, one question I get asked all the time is on LinkedIn, then is this post going to be seen by all my connections? And the answer is no, it's not going to be seen by other connections. They don't get some uh, little uh, message in their inbox saying, oh, Annabella posted today. Because if that were the case, then this would be very irritating, I'm sure, because not everybody wants to know what I'm doing. In fact, a lot of people don't want to know what I'm doing because they're too busy practicing law. But for those of us that are interested in others, they're on that home page, you're going to see kind of a feed uh, history of what's been posted. And what you're going to see is the posts that are looked at the most. So my object is to get my posts looked at more than others. That's why I'm going to keep this conversation rolling and I'm not going to just stop working on my LinkedIn post just because, you know, other people comment and I'm not going to ignore them. I'm going to make sure I respond to everyone that's on there. Does this take some time to do? Yeah, it takes some time to do, but not that much. I mean, I'm only on there maybe five minutes and every couple of days to check it out. And that's how I get thousands of people looking at my posts. So it's worth it to me. So let's talk about marketing others. I already told you how important it is to market others, and it is crucial. If you're going to be good at social media and get your word out and your brand out, you need to market other people. Even if that wasn't the case, I would do it anyway. But in this case, I found that it's a great way to market yourself. Now, going back to that networking group I belong to, Provisors, there's an attorney in that group, a tax attorney. It's outstanding. I mean, he's done work for me. He's referred me business. I respect him immensely. And I saw that, uh, you know, again, I, I did a search on his name online and found that he had an article that had been published about tax law in the Daily Journal. So I just used the same trick I already showed you. I took the URL, I put it into a new post, and then I went ahead and shared his article. This helps market him. It helps to market both of us, actually. But really, my goal here is to market him. I want people to hire him. I think he's great. I respect him. And I'm going to do everything I can to get his name out there and have other people hire him. Even if I never got any business out of it, I would do it. But I would certainly do it for somebody that's referred me business. Okay. So let's talk about another kind of uh, liking and commenting on other people's posts. It's not all about posts you do. When you're going through that homepage, you're going to see posts from other people that you know. 
So for instance, uh, James Hines is another attorney that I know that handles bankruptcy matters. He's working with me on uh, different aspects for a client of mine and bankruptcy issues and giving advice. And again, I want to help market him. So he has a post on LinkedIn where he's talking about this judgment and I'm going to like, press the little thumbs up sign to like his post. And then I'm going to comment on it because I know that by liking and commenting on his posts, it's going to bring more attention to his post. And again, the name of the game is to help market others. Now, in addition to just commenting on it, you can actually share other people's posts on your own LinkedIn profile. So, you know, these two guys, great attorneys, very impressive attorneys. I shared their posts onto my page and then I just, you know, wrote a quick note. I know about these attorneys and they're first rate because they are. And I was able to share their posts onto mine. And you do that by using the share button. You'll see it. It'll be very outstanding when you're on any post. It'll say like, share, etc., and you can share it from there. Also, takes next to no time and helps market other people. Another group I belong to in uh, Provisors is a, a women's group with a lot of female lawyers there. And again, group picture. I'm always getting people together in group pictures. I always seem to be jumping out of share somewhere and getting a picture of the group because, again. I'm trying to market people, I'm trying to get the names out, I'm trying to generate interest for other lawyers who I know and I respect. And so you need to be thinking about marketing constantly and your phone should be in your hand at all these events, taking pictures and getting other people to take pictures of everybody because a picture is worth a thousand words. Whenever I'm at an event and there are speakers that I like and I respect, I immediately get a picture of the speakers and I comment on, you know, what the presentation was or what their specialty was. These are two attorneys I respect very much and they were giving a great presentation on the professional responsibility role. So again, this is about marketing them and um, I was happy to share knowledge about it and I hope people follow up with them to find out what they know about the professional responsibility rules. Quick post, took me less than two minutes. Uh, help market them, help market everybody. Now, sometimes one picture is all you need. And in this case, I, back to the same organization, networking organization I belong to, we had two new group leaders, both attorneys, that were stepping up to be group leaders in this organization. They both know a lot of people. So is the gentleman in the middle who is, you know, kind of runs a Southern California Provisors organization. And I got this picture and because they have so many connections and this was basically a congratulations type of uh, post, you know, there was more than 6,000 people that looked at this post and a lot of people commented on it to congratulate them. And again, this is about marketing them, not me. And it was a popular post. It was looked at a lot and it took me no time whatsoever. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I have a lot of networking dinners, a lot of networking lunches, a lot of networking this and that that I go to, but um, I try to think outside the box, and I, I'm this tax attorney, uh, Lamar Taylor, who I know. I heard he was a pianist, and I'm a pianist too, so we decided, you know, rather than having the usual networking lunch, he was going to come over to my house, and we, you know, jam together on the piano, and he'd play me some piano, I'd play him some piano. We had a great time, and I took this picture of him, you know, where we're sitting there at my piano, having a good time. And there's more than 2,000 people that looked at it. And, and why? Because I think there's many reasons. One of them being that he's very well known as a tax attorney. He's absolutely brilliant. But nobody knew he was a pianist. And this different aspect of him, being both an artist and being a great tax attorney, was of a lot of interest to a lot of people. They commented on it they're like, gee, you know, I had no idea Lamar played the piano. What does that have to do with law? Nothing. But it has to do with him being an interesting, more than one dimensional person. And posting this picture on him did bring him notice and was able to market both himself and me because it's just a different aspect of ourselves. Social media, you got to have a little fun with social media. You can't be all serious all the time. I know there are lawyers that will say, oh, you know, it's just going to be law, law, law. And, and what's happening with the law, it can't be law all the time. I mean, sometimes you have to show different aspects of your life to gather interest. And in this digital age, you have to be more than a one-dimensional person. So I'm just giving you an idea of a more creative post 
that uh, again shows off to lawyers, but maybe not in a way that you would typically think. Here's another group leader in the same organization. Uh, just a quick picture and, and a quick post about how he's, you know, a CPA that's serving my clients well. Again, more than 2,000 people looked at this. He knows a lot of people. I know a lot of people. It's kind of like a thank you sort of thing. And it took no time at all. It was very easy to do. Here's some other folks that uh, are great communications coaches, and they were actually coaching my son, teaching him how to give the presentation and how to use his hands and you know how to, where to look and, and how to have a positive, upbeat attitude. And I did this post, and you can see there's almost 3,000 people that saw it because it was interesting. It has some visuals. The actual coaching is going on, so there's action photos. And again, it was took no time at all, uh, brought along a lot of marketing, and I, I understand they actually got hired by some other people I know to coach their sons and daughters because it's something people hadn't thought of before, and, and they were very impressive. <laughs> I was amazed at what these people can do in, in you know, a couple hours. But it, again, it's interesting, it's visual, and there's, uh, you know, it shows what they're doing hands-on through the visual pictures. Speakers come to my group all the time and speak, and I'm always getting pictures of people, you know, their attorneys that do different specialties to show off their practice of law. And again, it takes no time, but I have the marketing mind out 24-7. Then, you know, you go to uh, organizational parties for networking, for your business, for your work, and, and there's nothing wrong with posting, you know, more social types of photos for people that are in similar organizations, or maybe you're part of a law firm that has an annual Christmas party, whatever the case is. Again, it doesn't have to be serious all the time. You know, there's more than 4,000 people that saw this little group of pictures, because we all know a lot of people. But it's a little more fun post, and it is consistent, I think, with, you know, who I am and what I am. Again, if you're a collections loader, you want to be known as a shark. Maybe you don't want to be known as somebody that's out there socializing. But I think in my area of the law and my brand, it fits with me. So be creative and keep your camera out. Another post where I'm marketing somebody else. This is a CPA that I know, great CPA, also a pianist. She was giving a presentation at Seagerstrom Concert Hall. And uh, I thought it was very interesting. I thought the article was interesting. You know, took some pictures, posted it on here, invited people to her concert because I knew she people she knew what people wanted to come hear her play the piano. Has nothing to do with her as a CPA, but it was interesting. So that, as I said, being interesting can go a long way in social media as long as it's positive. So that kind of took us through, and I know I covered like a lot of material really fast, but if we have some questions, I'm happy to take them from anybody. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, you can chat them in. I know we've received a few, but and I've responded. Um, but Annabella, you had mentioned at the beginning that you received a call from a potential client yesterday who came across your LinkedIn profile, and clearly they read it. Do you know how he came across your profile? Was it like from a post that you did or? Yes, it's, it's somebody that I have met a number of years ago and I've run into them occasionally, but he apparently had seen a post that I did about, um, I think the upcoming, this seminar as a matter of fact, I posted That's a awesome. the CEB seminar. He saw it on there, it jogged his memory. He saw that I handled trade secrets and, and he went into my profile because he had a need at that time. Because again, it's about staying top of mind and making people remember who you are. I, I don't know about you, but I meet hundreds of people and I can't keep them all straight in my head. So I'm going to remember those people that are top of mind. So mm -hmm. whatever my message was, it jogged his memory that I actually did what I did. And then he went into the profile. Great. We actually have a, a really great question here. Do you recommend creating a LinkedIn profile for your business also or just have your personal profile as a lawyer? I think you should have both. If you're a law firm, you should have a law firm profile and especially, you know, bigger firms that have, you know, a whole bunch of attorneys, there should be probably news fed on the law firm, uh, LinkedIn profile that can then be shared by all the different lawyers. But I do kind of emphasize that I think that hiring of lawyers is really done by the individual. So, you know, nobody hires Rattan and Tugger necessarily just as a law firm. They're going to hire individual attorneys. So I think the chances of marketing the law firm 
are a lot better if it's done through the individual attorneys. And that's why many marketing professionals will, you know, they'll do the law firm feeds on the LinkedIn website, but then they'll appeal to individual attorneys to actually share those on their individual feeds. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend attorneys putting their bar number somewhere on their profile? I haven't really seen that done, and I don't think there's really a need for that because, I mean, let's face it, all you have to do is go into the state bar uh, website and put in any lawyer, you're going to get that kind of stuff. So I don't think that's necessary. Great. Um, Another great question that just came in. Are there any problems with copyright infringement by linking to URLs of articles written or published by others? And how do you handle obtaining permissions for use? Well, I think that if you are, it's just like Pinterest and any of these other things, sharing content doesn't seem to be a problem. If you're trying to pass it off as your own, then this is definitely a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But otherwise, you're literally bringing uh, more notice and business to what something that's already published on there anyway. So uh, I don't think that's a problem. It's just, uh, you know, obviously copying anybody's content and saying this is mine is, is not going to work. But short of that, I think you're fine. Great. Um, just curious, um, I, I, you know, I know you, you do a lot of posts. Is there one particular type of post that's been most you know, popular for you or um, successful? Um, I know you do a little bit both a professional and community service. You show like, um, you know, the fun side of you when you go to networking events. Um, is there any type of post that has, in terms of analytics that have been you know, most popular? Yes, and and they're actually the non-legal ones. I think that the Mm. networking posts where you're with a group of people and and group shots, those kind of things, or showing off other lawyers that are personal, more personal nature photos, those tend to do better than others. Again, I think you have to have some legal posts in there to remind people of what you do, but you'd be surprised at how many people look at those and how it keeps you top of mind in, in your legal business, even though it has nothing to do with it. Yeah, and I like that you also do videos, you know, and they can be really short and it can really help you become, you know, seen as thought leaders, you know, it can be um, not only by your community service, but pretty much your practice area and what you know. Um, There is another question that just came in. Um, The question is, are there any analytics tools to look at LinkedIn, like Google Analytics? I know that there are. I mean, personally, I don't have the paid version of LinkedIn. A number of people have asked me, oh, do you pay for that LinkedIn premium? And I know there are analytics in there that can be looked at. I mean, I can see based on my own posts exactly how many people are looking and viewing mine. So that's kind of what I use. But I know that in the paid version, there's, there's more ability to get that kind of information. And, you know, I think for your typical person like myself, I'm not sure you necessarily need more than what you have with the unpaid version, but I know you can get more information through the premium version. Great. Um, We have two questions that just came in. Um, These are all really great. Can you talk about um, or comment on updating profile or deleting old posts? I don't really delete old posts. I mean, I think that the, the profile itself should absolutely be kept up to date. So uh, I think that um, as long as it's relevant positions you've had in the past, I wouldn't take those off. But, you know, if let's say I'm an attorney who's been to maybe five different law firms in the last five years, you may or may not want to show that because some people might think, oh, you're kind of jumping around from law firm to law firm, and you may for some reason want to take it off. But in general, I don't remove posts, but I do keep it current. So let's say I uh, was teaching at Brandman you know, a year and a half ago, and now I'm teaching primarily at Chapman. So I'm going to keep my post up to date with where I'm at and who I'm working for. In my case, you know, I haven't mm-hmm. had a lot of movement in, in jobs, but if that were the case, I might want to you know, remove some of the old ones. Uh-huh. And then, um, you know, someone wants to know, um, do you use your phone for most of your uploads? I know the LinkedIn app is really great and really easy, especially for lawyers, because you're always on the go and you're really busy. Um, so do you mostly use your the app on your phone or do you use something else to push out the posts? I would say that for uh, actually putting my own content on, I, I use uh, you know, a computer at my desk most mm-hmm. of the time, but for commenting and viewing my posts 
you know, on the go, I would use my app more often. Now, sometimes I will post directly from my phone, but I'm, I'm kind of an anal person. So when I take pictures, I usually like to see them full size and make sure the lighting is nice and everything, edit them if they're too dark, <laughs> you know, move, remove the red eye, you know, so I, I'm a little anal about that. And that's why I do it probably where I could see the, the pictures better because to me, it's all about the pictures. But I use the LinkedIn app on my phone to comment on other people's posts and see how my own posts are doing and just to view what's going on in my feed. So both. That's great. Um, I don't see any other questions right now, but I just want to take this moment to thank you, Annabella. This is really, really great. Um, for everyone who's on the webinar, I will be sending out the deck later this afternoon. I'll also send out some additional resources, um, you know, such as like, you know, how to post multiple photos or how to do your LinkedIn video. So we'll include that in the email as well. So look out for that. Um, you should receive it in your inbox um, before the end of the day. Um, and if anyone has any questions or if they want to connect with you, Annabella, what's the best way? I assume it's LinkedIn. Yeah, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, and, and one more tip, when you are connecting with somebody on LinkedIn, it's always very helpful to personalize it. So mm -hmm. for instance, if you reach out to me today, I mean, I would say, hi, Annabella, I was on your, your LinkedIn webinar, I thought we should connect, rather than just sending some empty LinkedIn uh, request for a connection, it's always nice to personalize it. That is such an important uh, tip. Um, and a lot of people forget to do that because otherwise they'll think, oh, who is this random person? Um, so definitely include a little note about how you know them or why you want to connect with them. And one, one last thing, I think mm -hmm. you should be discriminating about who you should connect with. People ask me, oh, you know, do you connect with everybody? The answer is no. I read the profile of every single person that asks to connect with me to see mm -hmm. what they're about, especially if there is no message. And I see if it's somebody that's trying to sell me something, and if they're trying to sell me something, they're out of here. Uh, if they're trying to, you know, connect with me on whatever other kind of level, or right, they're of interest to me, then I'm going to connect with them. And if they have no picture, then I'm immediately questioning why they're trying to connect with me, and I'm suspicious. So have a picture. <laughs> this is great. Um, again, thank you so much, Annabella, and for everyone else, um, I will be setting out the deck later this afternoon. Thank, Thank you. you and have a great afternoon, everybody.